You're listening to Off the Rails in Romance Landia with the Stalker Sisters, a journey through all things indie romance related. Some language may not be suitable for all ears. Frequent use of sarcasm may occur. We are starting off a brand new year with a brand new rebrand and two of our absolute favorite people on the planet. So we are super excited. The Off the Rails in Romance Landia podcast is starting fresh in 2024 with the amazing incomparable incomparable Kaylee Loring and Connor Crace. So thank you guys so much for being here with wow. us. We're super excited thank about Thank you for having us. You're welcome. <laughs> we're just going to sit for a minute. Connor, just say anything. Just, just, just talk. <laughs> Say, say anything. anything that's how we're starting the interview no, we, no we, quit. Say, just say, a just say a word anything there Thank we go girl again because it, yeah where's the dog we should bring her over yeah. maggie she liked that she was well maggie, maggie. maggie. sit, she, oh. sit. <laughs> she totally did <laughs> uh, yes good girl good girl maggie there we go she is a good girl. She just turned nine yesterday, so we're very, hey, very uh, happy with nice, our happy little birthday. Maggie here. Yeah, she's a good girl. All right, so we're here talking about all the things, and this is actually going to air if all the stars align on the same day as your new book. Uh, really? So Yes, so we're super excited cool. about that. Unless you don't want it to, because we can totally no, shift I'm, that either way. I'm fine with that. Talk it, to Julie. It feels like a million years away. <laughs> it feels like... It's really not. No, it's not. Soon. It's yeah, it's 10 soon. days away. I know. It still feels like a million years. So, you, yeah, so you've got a new, brand new book coming out. So tell us a little bit about the brand new book. Oh, it's called The Billionaire is Back. And it's, um, it's our first billionaire romance. And it's a small town brother's best friend, steamy romantic comedy. Um, and it's, uh, it's pretty funny. Do you want to talk about it, bicep person? <laughs> I have a name. Um, Sir? Yeah, well, our, how did it start? You, you wanted to write a, we talked about what we wanted to do next, and we said, billionaire? Is it, was that you or was that me? It, it was you. It was me? I said it, billionaire? It was sort of like, fuck it, let's just write a billionaire romance. Yeah. Okay, well. That sounds right. That sounds. And like then me. I wanted to write a small town romance, and I wanted to write a brother's best friend romance. Right. So then, and then we take those pieces that we initially start, and we go like, okay, so what is this? What could this story look like then, if those are the the initial ingredients? So then it all just kind of came back from there. So the whole idea, the billionaire is back. So he he comes home after gaining his fortune. So that was kind of the deal. So how do we get the small town back in there? Um, so he's a New Englander, uh, like I, I am, I was, um, and, uh, so that was part of the fun of writing it for me is the idea of coming home to New England, what that would look like. Um, and, yeah. uh, if I could just jump in, it's set yeah. in a fictional small town called Beacon Harbor in Maine. That's kind of based on Booth Bay Harbor, which mm -hmm. is a very charming, right. lovely coastal town. Yep. I yeah. love it. And this isn't the first book that you guys have written together. So we'll talk about that a little bit too. And the, the cool thing is, thank you guys both very much. We received advanced listening copies. Um, so we could dive right in with the audio, which is fantastic. Um, narrated by Connor and Samantha Brentmore. Um, and it is absolutely wonderful. We've really been enjoying it. So thank you guys for that, because that's a really great way to experience um, any of your books is fantastic so we we definitely appreciate that and um we're we're not new necessarily to listening to you guys we've definitely listened to uh your books before i i kind of have a habit of grabbing them as soon as they come out and pushing to the side whatever i happen to be listening to i just won't say what i was listening to uh and <laughs> popping them right in uh because i enjoy listening to them but uh so because so we're not new to listening to you guys to reading your books i've been let's see i'm trying to think the first book that i read kaylee by you was the christmas one a very bossy, bossy christmas. christmas yes was bossy christmas and i was kind of hooked that was the first one i recorded for kaylee that's how we met was it oh, yes. that's yep. cool yep. okay 
which is one of my questions was how did you guys meet? But so that's very cool. Um, Julie, how did you, what, how'd you find Kaylee? I believe it was through Avery Maxwell's reader group. I don't know oh, if it was, okay. Ron, you might uh, be able to tell club. that. <laughs> I think oh, it was club. the book club. Okay. <clears throat> we did um, uh, the so friendly Valentine's Day. Day. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That was yeah. the Kaboober. And then book. I went, oh man. Oh, the Kaboober. <laughs> <So> the Kaboober. <laughs> That was, oh, very that, was, that was very Vegas. That was very oh, Vegas. Okay. Yep. Yep, yeah. That was next. That was the yep. second book we wrote together. Right. Was yeah. very Vegas. It the Kaboober was, was actually so a Connor idea. Yes. That was that fantastic. Was for the Kaboobie. Yeah. That was fantastic. Yeah. Um, but so, Ron, what about you? First Kaylee um, book? My first Kaylee book. Oh, you, you, the first Kaylee book was probably Sleeper. Really? Okay. Maybe. Oh long time ago same in it far galaxy far away um yeah. i think i found her on a uh, because of a facebook post maybe on lucy's group i don't remember okay. for sure but um i've been listening i've been reading for re reading her for a long time and then um the F valentine's day book was the first audio book but it was also my very first audio book because really? i don't like them <laughs> Really? The only the only audio the only audio books that I listen to are Connors. Okay, Jason keep Clark. talking. And Jason Clark. Who? You don't like <laughs> I haven't heard of, huh? Yeah. We don't talk about, about him. Oh. Yeah. Um I haven't heard that name. Hmm. Yeah. No, so I'll, that I'll have to look him up. I haven't you, really heard you much actually, about him. I, I had I had so started to color. listen to a couple and or of other audiobooks and and couldn't do it, um, and then but your Valentine's Day book was the very first that I actually like I loved this and I and yeah. then Vegas and it was all over and now the baseball books and <laughs> yeah good I think Valentine was the oh, first football audiobook football. I listened to that Connor narrated because so I'm trying to think back to what the first one was because I wasn't into audiobooks for a long time. But I think mm. I think Valentine was the first one I listened to that kind of narrated, and then it was kind of like yeah, everything. It, so it helps he, that he auto that he also does audio for Avery, so like I have an excuse. There you go. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That's another thing doing the <laughs> with um when I audio proof for authors and certain narrators come up, and I'm like, I got speaking <laughs> of Michelle, I uh -huh. <laughs> recently recorded a book, but I don't know which one it was. Your notes were still in it. Uh -oh. That had to be oh, it was Josie. What? Who was it? Was it? Was it Josie Watt? Maybe. I also probably shouldn't say <laughs> who it was. It's not a I don't know what's. Well, I never know what is in uh, public. So it's fine. <laughs> yeah. No. I. Yeah. I actually just finished No Coming Back, Troy, for Janice. Mm -hmm. And I think my notes were in that one. Yeah. <laughs> when I was looking yeah. At so it, I was the like, whole time I. I, I knew what Michelle liked and was like, <laughs> was the, she's like, this, this is a really good part. And I was like, all right. Yeah. Sure she used the it. copy. I had the yeah. teasers in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. That's yeah. good to know. Yeah. yeah. That one. And then there was, um, you <clears throat> did the audio for Samantha Christie for the first McQuaid mm -hmm. book. Mm -hmm. You're seeing the face, right? Um, yes. Oh my gosh the grandpa tucker uh, tucker mcquade mm -hmm. i begged samantha christie <laughs> to let you do every line through the whole series For because tucker. you were <laughs> the perfect tucker mcquade perfect yep so that was a good book too that was he you know hawk was a difficult character and it's hard sometimes to bring the ultimate asshole to life and have people like him. Not so, for Connor. Um, and that's what I was going to say, but there are certain people who do it really, really well. And, uh, you know, you have to be able to put a lot of personality into an audiobook when you're reading it. Um, it's, I, I keep telling people when I'm thinking of audiobooks that it's not about reading. It's not reading. You're performing mm -hmm. someone's work. Um, and it makes a huge difference when I listen to an audiobook, a performance versus a reading i don't want someone to read a book to me i can read a book to my damn self i need someone to bring it to life in my head um which is another reason why i i, I kind of grabbed onto a lot of kaylee's books a lot of your books because of the full cast recording that you do with them um with yeah. the uh, the brothers um 
Brody. The Brody Thank brothers. you, the Brody family, the Brody brothers. <clears throat> yeah, the full cast ones were like just epic. Yeah. So, yeah. well, I think that's why uh, Kaylee and I clicked uh, as as well as we did. Is I mean, she writes for acting. Not not every writer writes for performance. True. Some are more. Some read more as narration, and some are more. You can't not act them. So. Obviously, what I do and what I like, I gravitate towards the second. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, I when I did Bossy Christmas, I was like, oh, what's this? I did I had done enough at that point to know a lot of the moves and a lot of like, okay, I I see I see how this goes, and and Kaylee's stuff is just it's not in it's like in a category all its own. So I was like, oh, this is okay, I can really act this thing. Yeah, that's awesome. Good, bro. You really did. And it, it shows. It definitely shows. Susie, I, I we kind of like get off the track here. Susie, how, what was your first Kaylee book? What was the first Connor narration? This was my first Kaylee book. Cool. That's really? Sweet. Yeah. We've introduced you to Kaylee. Sweet. I've heard you guys talk about it before. And I, I think I have you guys like the Bossy Christmas on my TBR, but I just never got to read it. And then... I don't do audible at all. So this was my first <laughs> audible as well. Really? I had a really hard time listening to it <laughs> because I like to highlight the notes in Kindle and I like to go back and reread. And then there was a yeah. part of like, I have a squirrel brain. So it took me, I was like, okay, what did he say? And yeah. You just talk back. That is an ad for the audience. I, yeah. <laughs> I usually wind up going back and highlighting. I've actually pulled over to the side of the road to pull up my phone with the Kindle app on it and bring up a book and highlight things in it because I'm like, that was really good. I need to remember that. I, I took the, I would have paused and took notes and I'm like, I, I can't do this. I need to physically read the book. Susie re re rewinds because she didn't hear it correctly the first time I rewind because I want to hear it again yeah, yes yeah. yeah Kaylee's I I'm trying to remember which one it was but I know that Kaylee your you, one of your audiobooks was the first one where I had to pull over to the side of the road because I was laughing so hard I was gonna wreck do you remember which one it was Julie because I messaged her right away and I'm like I am sitting in a parking lot laughing my ass off people are looking at me like I'm weird because I am laughing so hard. I'm crying at this book, but I can't stop listening to it. <laughs> so my guess is that it was the uh, no. Vegas one. Yeah, I, think I, was I, Vegas. I think it was Vegas. I think it was Vegas. <laughs> I think you're right. I just remember yeah. one, sitting in a parking lot in Ellicott City going, I just, I'm going to wait right here until this scene ends <laughs> and then I'll keep going. Cause I was, I was in tears. I was laughing so hard. So yeah. yeah. It's happened again a couple of times since. I have to remind myself sometimes that there are certain books I should not listen to when I'm driving because I live out rural and the roads are, um, yeah. They're <laughs> yeah, kind of yeah no, safety first. I always, I always worry about that. Honestly, it's like it's, Avery talks about that too. She always talks about how she's missing <laughs> turnoffs yeah. and yeah, and laughing and I. Yeah, she sounded not safe on the road. With yeah. the way she <laughs> I don't, listening to I audiobooks don't like and driving. It. Yeah, I don't like hearing that people stay up late and to read my books. I would rather people sleep and, you know, I'm glad they're laughing. I completely I disagree. Like I'm the half. Listen all night long. Enjoy. Live life to the fullest. Later. Yeah. Uh -huh. Connor, Connor and <laughs> Kaylee got me in trouble in a car um, waiting room, uh, an auto repair waiting room. Okay. I think it was, I, I think it was Vegas that got me in trouble <clears throat> because I forgot that I didn't have my earbuds in. <laughs> ah. And everybody just was kind of like, okay. Oh, the strawberry scene. <laughs> what's, oh, the what's strawberry the, scene. What's that the was crazy fantastic. grandma I listened to? <laughs> but that was fantastic. There are certain scenes that do, they stick out in your mind and uh, even with with the, the new one, like there are some that I've listened to two ago, and I, I still remember that scene very, very vividly. And then in in the new one, there are scenes where I'm like, yeah, that one's going to live rent free in my head forever. And we're not going to talk this spoilers. So, you yeah. know, just know that people are going to listen and, and read it. And it's like, OK, yeah, this one's going to live rent free in my in my head forever and ever and ever because they're just hilarious. <laughs> thank you um yeah they're really well done so, so well um done. so well done kind of got so many questions and so I, I think you touched on it a little bit but i want to circle around to it 
a little bit more. Kaylee, why did you start writing romance? When and why did you start writing romance? What's the the backstory for Kaylee? Uh, so I was a professional screenwriter in Hollywood um, for a long time under a different name. Um, and so I did it for like 15 years. And um, I just kind of woke up one day and realized that that career was probably over unless I wanted to start over as a TV writer. I was writing feature films for studios. And um, I didn't want to do that because you have to be in a room with other writers and pitch story ideas. And as I've tried to explain to you, I don't like talking. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, can you imagine? Like, I literally would have been on the toilet like all day, every day. But um, nobody has any out. context for that. <laughs> I don't care. That was part of the pre show. I don't care. Okay. Now They'll you put have two to start a Patreon and, <laughs> and charge people to hear the. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so uh, I, you know, I realized that obviously the only thing I can do is write. And um, I had a friend um, who wanted to be, who had always wanted to be an author. And I encouraged her to write um, erotica when um, that was sort of uh, starting in like 20... 11 2012 or something like that I said you can do this and she actually did pretty well back in the um you know in the uh, gold rush days um of writing uh and self-publishing -publish romance and and I thought well I guess I'll do that and um it's funny because I actually hated writing romantic comedies as a screenwriter because romantic comedy scripts are very nuts and bolts and you really don't get to mm reinvent the wheel and I guess the thing that was missing in those uh, scripts for me was the sex <laughs> because I kind of really <laughs> enjoyed writing that and I also you know when you write uh, screenplays you aren't allowed to uh, you're, it's kind of cheating if you write a monologue like an internal monologue and mm -hmm. and I realized writing um, these books that I, I actually really love getting into characters heads so mm -hmm. I what I first did was when I still lived in LA, I um, novelized a sort of half written romantic comedy called The Workation that I had written. And I just sort of sprinkled in a little bit of a little bit of sex. And I had at that point only read like one and a half um, other steamy romantic comedies that were published by um, indie romance authors and I was like okay yeah I got it and I just you know I wrote it really quickly and um published it and it actually it did okay and I thought well I guess I'm gonna be an author and so I spent the next year kind of um shifting into uh author life which meant you know putting my house up for sale in LA and moving to a more affordable part of America and um so yeah, at the end of 2017, I um, started uh, writing and self-publishing steamy romantic comedies. And, um, you know, the goal was uh, I was going to stay under the radar uh, for my first nine books. And then by my 10th book, like this, this was my business plan. <laughs> and then by my 10th <laughs> book, I would, I figured I would know what I was doing kind of enough to start doing things the way professional authors are supposed to do them. <laughs> so that's, that's hilarious that's what I did. yeah and I that's only, not what most people do they're like they want the hit I, now. honestly you know? nobody should do what I did like I things have you know kind of worked out for me okay but like I especially because of working with Connor and Connor being much more strategic than I am and he's always kind of like why aren't you more successful <laughs> like you that's have not how i catch it that's <laughs> not it no i'm i'm what's his face from the notebook what do you want what do you want yeah God damn it, what do you want like and so yes. kaylee has to articulate what her actual goal is with, and i hate i you. love that. yeah and she hates it i love but, it um, yeah. but yeah so i'm trying to be more businessy now and have mm -hmm. goals and businessy. ambitions and <laughs> yeah yeah. Well, I, the industry has changed a lot where it it's not, months, uh, right? you know, so. you have to be more strategic. It's there's more people in the pool, um, more fish in the sea, whatever. And there's you a have lot to of robots in the pool. Too. Yeah. yeah, there are. They need to go. Um, yeah. Not a fan of all that 
crap, but it is, it, there's more people writing, there's more people putting out books and, and uh, I was going to use the word infiltrating. I don't know if that's the right word, but, you know, <laughs> trying to, <laughs> to infiltrate a market that that's, that's established, but continues to grow. And there, there's more readers coming in all the time too, which is yeah. fantastic, but there's more challenges now. So I think you really do have to be more strategic now than a, a lot of authors had to be or were, you know, eight, 10 years ago. And like you said, it changes right. almost every month. Yeah. Um, you really have to know where you're going. So having a plan is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, as a, an author, as an author mentor, I'll, I will say that is not a bad thing to have a plan. Uh, no. But having a fluid plan is also a really good thing and knowing that things change. Oh, yes. I'm very so, fluid. Having um, <laughs> super fluid. Um, yeah. So anyways, and then, uh, you know, once I realized that, um, I could uh, write for audio. That was kind of a game changer for me, too. And that happened. Um, <clears throat> uh, that happened in 2018, 2019. Um, yeah, 2019. Um, so that uh, that was when things got more fun for me. I think. Yeah. I love that because you said you write for audio, and I think there are certain authors who definitely do write for audio. You know, you you think of it as a or as a performance, as a screenplay, something that you're writing versus something that's yeah. read. And yeah, and, because yeah. I had been writing for actors um, for such a long yeah. time. And I I got to a point where I kind of missed that. And then I realized that I didn't have to miss it anymore. And so that was pretty, pretty great. Yeah. I love that. Those types of realizations are um, not many people listen when those things come into their mind. So oh. I love that you did, that you listened to that, that little voice. Yeah. Um, and so Connor, how did you move into, how did you get into narrating and how did you move from narrating to writing and narrating? Cause they're, they're kind of different. Um, well, narrating romance. Uh, narrating in general, like, how, yeah. Where did you start in narrating? Well, I've been doing voiceover romance? for a long time. I mean, now it's been, I don't know, 15 years, maybe. Um, wow. A lot of, a lot of corporate voiceovers. Um, I had some commercials. I did theater for a while. Uh, I did a couple of TV shows, uh, very limited, not like anything serious, just like a few episodes here and there. And then uh, Ava Lucas uh, found me uh, randomly. Um, and she's like, hey, you, sh you, I think you'd be good at this. You should, you should check out this whole world. And I kind of put her off for a while, maybe a year. I was like, I don't, I don't know anything about that. Um, but then I was looking for something new. Um, and so I, I put more effort into it and I found this thing and I said, oh, okay. I think, uh, I think Ava led me somewhere good. So then I decided, um, we had, we had a child come down and, uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> I, I have a wife upstairs corralling mine. So we'll see if I have any interruptions. Um, so, uh, so yeah, then uh, I decided I go, oh, I, I like this. I feel like, um, I think I joked about it with, uh, I went to one of the narrator conventions and I was like, oh, it's nice being part of a, an acting business where it's growing. Because every other part with TV's dying, theater's dying, theater's dead. You know, it's mm -hmm. just like everything's dying. And audiobooks were growing. Now they'll die again because the robots are here. But like <laughs> at the time, everything was growing. And then I had wanted to be, I had wanted to write for a long, long time. And I have, uh, I still have, and I had before I started working with Kaylee, an unpublished novel. Um, and then as I was- An unfinished uh, unpublished novel. Uh, no, the different novel. Oh, that's uh, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, that was another not that one. Yeah, okay. That one is an unfinished unpublished romance novel that I was writing. And then I get an email from Kaylee being like, hey, do you want to write with me? And I was like, yeah. It was a much longer email. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, wittily <laughs> crafted, with, filled with the right amount of humor. Very and, apologetic. Uh, truth, <laughs> yes. Um, yes, it was a very well-written letter. Um, but I was just like, you know, Kaylee doesn't need me. You know, she's she doesn't need me to write. So um, that was a huge, huge boon for me that I was able to uh, work with somebody um as established and knowledgeable as Kaylee so um it was a huge learning curve for both of us though as far as you know <laughs> Kaylee 
I mean, hilariously, your whole origin story was how like, well, I don't want to work with people. I know. And then you decided <laughs> to suddenly work with a person. So, um, yeah. I know. I, <laughs> well, but you're I mean, on the other side of the the country, so you are. I mean, She's but really therein <laughs> lies a lot of the problem because of the time zone difference. But um, it's true. But yeah, I mean, that's what's funny too is like I I never wanted to be a traditionally published author because. I was like, well, you know, a publish a publisher is going to make me leave my house to talk to to, to fans in bookstores. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that online either. Screw that. I'm just going to stay in my room and hit publish and write all day. And uh, it turns out, <laughs> it turns out, mm -hmm. it's not how it goes. It and I'm fine with it now. But you know, it's I, all been a shock. <laughs> and there's a progression. I think there's also a neat little thing where, you know, we we don't necessarily have to leave our houses to see people anymore or to interact with people anymore. So that brings a little bit of a comfort zone. Um, but as an indie author, I think there's a lot of expectations on you guys that some traditional don't have because you're promoting yourselves and you're building your own market and you are really you you are your everything you're your pr team and your marketing and your you know you've you're out there on in groups and on uh social media promoting what you do and that takes interaction but there's a nice little buffer of you know this screen and the keyboard um, yeah so it doesn't always feel like there's a buffer but yeah there is i mean I'm i get kind that of, kind of a mental thing that i've been working on yeah I get that 100%. We've, we've had conversations about that before where it's like, you would think <laughs> with the buffer, people would behave themselves, but not necessarily. Uh, and then, you know, there are a lot of uh, opportunities for authors to go out and to, to meet people and, and to get in front of fans. And some authors yeah. love it. Some authors just eat yeah. it up. They love that. And others are like, it's not my thing. And that's okay. Because you have I these other ways of interacting. Yeah, Connor and I have been talking recently about how at a certain point it's going to have to be our thing because, you know, that that's the thing that we can do that robots can't, right? So, yeah. Once I'm once I'm fully over my uh adrenal fatigue. Mm. And You've had a lot going on. Right. Yeah. Julie, I'm I'm throwing it over to you. <laughs> oh, actually, I would <laughs> Welcome back. I was gonna... Yeah. I was when you were speaking, Kaylee, in regards to screenwriting and, you know, now writing as an author, what's your process? Do you write the story kind of like a, a screenplay and then okay. kind of go back and throw in? I mean, how do you do it? Oh, no. I mean, no, I mean how did you switch? I mean, it was it was hard. I thought it would be the same thing just a different format it's it's completely different i mean so if you've ever seen a screenplay or if you've never seen a screenplay um there are very few words on the page and the way if you watch a movie if it's like you know a, it, if it's a two-hour movie it's a 120 page script it's a, a minute per page and there's just a lot of white space on the page um it's the dialogue goes down the center of the page and you're not supposed to write much description so it's really just a lot of dialogue um, and you have to figure out you know uh, subtext most of the time or, or an action instead of um you know having the characters say what they're thinking or feeling or wanting or whatever um and so you know i i had been i had trained myself and been trained i got my um EFA in creative writing, and I, I studied um, drama and mostly writing drama. Um, and so, you know, I learned not to um, say what they're feeling and, and thinking and blah, blah, blah. And I had to train myself to write across the page instead of yep. down the middle of the page. And I had to train yep. myself to explain to the reader what, you know, why a um a character is feeling and thinking and doing a certain thing and you know that took a little while like my early my first few books are kind of sparse because I mean, the first two actually are novelizations of unfinished 
screenplays. But then, you know, I got the hang of it. And I think I've started to really lean into the internal monologue a little too much because I'm so in my head. I think my heroines especially can very much spiral out. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, no, I, I write uh, in sequence. I write from, you know, the beginning of chapter one straight through to the end of the book i used to when i wrote screenplays it was a lot easier to kind of jump around because um you know like i said there are fewer words and so it's a lot easier to rewrite a script and you have to rewrite a script um, if you're a professional writer and you're working with uh, producers yeah. and studio executives you do a lot of rewrites because you get a lot of notes a lot of people are um uh, giving you their two cents and so um, I think actually because of that experience, I learned a lot so I can sort of see uh, ahead of time where something is going and if there is going to be a problem and I can kind of go from micro to macro and back again mm -hmm. while I'm working. Um, so I, my first draft is very polished and for the most part, I, uh, I really only do a first draft and you know if there's any you know, then it just kind of goes to the copy editor and uh, then the proofreader. And so the, the final manuscript is very similar to, uh, you know, what I, what I started writing um, and what Connor and I started writing. And, and that, what's funny is Connor is, um, he's pretty different. I think if he were writing on his own, he would probably prefer to do a lot of different drafts. And what I have learned is to trust that he, <laughs> sometimes I will get a first, <laughs> you know, like rough draft of something from Connor, I'll be like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, this is garbage. <laughs> and mm -hmm. it does, mm -hmm. it does get better. Like, and, and he does that. And it's interesting because Connor, when he's recording, um, is actually kind of similar to me. Like he kind of re re records as he goes, like, um, Connor is better, probably better at explaining this than me, but, um, the way that most narrators record is um, punch and roll, right, Connor? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so if they are reading along and they realize they made a mistake or something, they will stop and they'll go back and then they'll start recording again. Um, Connor will just keep recording and he'll like, if he doesn't like the way he said a line, he'll just say it again two or three times and then he'll go back and he'll edit it out. Mm -hmm. um, because he likes to just keep going. Um, but anyways, yeah, I, I don't know if that answers your question, but I absolutely do not yeah. write like a screenplay and then go back. I, I am writing a novel from the very beginning and I, I, I go in sequence and- uh, Yeah, I mean, that was a learning curve when we started writing together. That is not how I would write at all, not even close. <laughs> I'm, a big, I'm a big outline guy. I want to swoop in and circle the story over and over and over again. So if I have a chapter and I know, I mean, I'll know what's going to happen in the story. I'll do the whole story and then I'll, I'll plan out every chapter, but I'll get to chapter seven. And if I'm not feeling it, I know what happens. So I'll write, you know, 500 words and then I'll be like, I'll come back to that. And then there'll be chapters. There was a chapter in um, Dash between him and his agent, I just, mm -hmm. I actually spoke that into my phone and that was, it was pretty much done. It was done in an hour. I you know, finished it um, wow. and it was like start to finish. So, yeah, so I don't, I mean that thing. So us trying to navigate that cause she, you know, cause she wanted a finished product and the, immediately any creativity was like gone from my brain <laughs> and my heart where it's like well you make sure it's a finished product it's like well then you're getting nothing good then nothing good is gonna come <laughs> that's, so, that's exactly what i got yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> well not nothing good so calm down um <laughs> honestly sometimes he does pull a pearl out of his ass i'm sorry i couldn't think of a more lovely way of putting it but um but so, well, like, maybe and if he you does... outlined and then took some time with it you would have come up with See, I just don't like talking. This is what happens. Um, we actually wrote this one differently, actually, The Billionaire is Back. Um, yeah. The first four, I mean, it was, it was still a similar process where I, she, she kind of take, like, what tropes do we want? What, who are these people in general? What is the basic? And then I went to outline it. I mean, I think 
I think with Decker a little bit, I had this like story. I was, there, there's this thing I want to do. Um, so that was a little bit more, but the rest of it was all like, all right, Kaylee, what are we doing? Actually, that's not true. No? Well, kind of, but Dash was your idea trope wise. You wanted to do. Um, that's true. That's true. You wanted um, to do the pregnancy thing. Right. Um, um, and then, but so then I, I go and outline, I, I figure out all the pieces and all the, put them all together. And then I come back and I go, all right, so where, what, what pieces of this do you like? Where, where do we go from here? And then she would write the female POV and I would write the male one. And that's how we've done it. And except for this one, we started that way. And then we were doing some, uh, workshop work on like, how, how do we, how do we, um, what is it? Maximize this partnership as far Optimize, as make sure th maximize. Yeah. That's right. Okay. That's right. So business size. Yeah. Business size, <laughs> jazzer size, business size, yep. synergize. Yes. And I realized because I like the top level, high level, like making, how do, how do all the pieces fit together? How these people work together. Um, and you know, Kaylee's wordplay is second to none. And when she really gets going on a chapter. So what happened is, one, I think around, because we wrote, we started it in our initial working relationship, right, Kaylee? And then around like chapter six or seven, I was like, okay, I'm going to give you a rough chapter. I'm going to give you the pieces that I like, and I can come back to it later. But if you want to run with this, you run with it. And so then you would polish yeah. it and you would you make did, it complete. You basically decided it would be more efficient for each of us to do the thing that we liked and are good at. So Right. Yes. Yeah. So that Love this that. this book is the is the fruits of that labor. So did that make it more fun? No. <laughs> <laughs> this book wasn't fun to write because I, I was burnt out most of the time. Yeah, and well, so you it know, felt arduous. We 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 talked about it after and we are not able currently to separate it from the life people were living and yeah. like mm -hmm. that whole thing and um you know figuring it out from a our working relationship and what made the most sense versus the actual maybe this process doesn't work i think it does work i think we can oh, make i'm it not saying it. it doesn't work i yeah. well the fun part is always um the google doc comments that we make that's yeah that's yeah. fun yes um, yeah that is always the most fun part of a process that yeah. <laughs> well i saw michelle's that's i got to see <laughs> Well, Michelle's I, when I was recording. I, my authors laugh at me with some of my notes in the margin because they'll get everything from, what the fuck was that? To, uh, I don't think that means what you think it means. <laughs> to, mm -hmm. um, my favorite one is when they finally get the one that says, and there goes the tea, um, which <laughs> usually means that I now have to clean up the mess that I have made on my screen because they have made me laugh. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, the tea is now covering the computer screen. But yeah, the margin notes are always fun because then they'll send me back things that say things like, how did you not understand that? Or I'm glad I made you laugh. Or what do you mean? What the fuck? Well, I kind of mean what I said, but the, the <laughs> this is way more polite, That's even, so with, polite. even with You're the so F-bomb than what Kaylee, yeah, so <laughs> civilized. <laughs> so I'm like, um, did you have a stroke? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've oh, left I, a couple she like said, that. She said, I didn't know this joke was going to be in the story. I was like, yeah, the jokes are going in the book, Kaylee. That's what the, <laughs> That's why I wrote the jokes so they would be in the book. Yeah. That we've, and then we've she had called a... me in, uh, oh. I, one of her favorite <laughs> names for me. Uh, uh, what? I don't know. I don't remember which one. Asshat? Probably. Yeah. 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 No. The names are always fun. I, I come from a background of teaching, so I tend to revert a little bit sometimes when I'm making notes where it's like, I wouldn't say that to one of my students, but I could say that to a friend. So every now and then the friends things slip through, but I tend to revert a little back, bit back to the teaching part. And then there's always the ones where our, sometimes the margin note is just ha 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 because it's <laughs> that's yeah, I know Rod's looking at me like. Yeah, she's seen my margin notes and different things I've worked on. I think Julie's definitely seen my margin notes. Yeah. I've, I've, I've faded enough of your edits. So. That's true. And sometimes I'll highlight good girl and then I'll be I, like, at Michelle. <laughs> at Michelle. Here's yours. 
there are certain lines that come up that I appreciate more than others. That mm. that's true. Um, and there are certain I it, it's weird now that I get to the point where I'm when I'm reading or editing certain things, I hear it in certain voices. Um, so certain narrators will invade my brain and I'll hear their voices in my head reading things or actors or things. And Julie will go back and highlight and say, Yeah, you're gonna like this one. I'm like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes, 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 I did. Um, and then we just kind of move on. But uh, I love that you talk about how it's a process because I think there's always a process that happens and the process shouldn't stay the same. I, I love hearing yeah, from you guys. Fluid. that it's changed. We're fluid. It is. Yeah. It's, it's fluid and things change and it can be everything from, well, this isn't working, so we need to fix it to, um, like I said, things are going on in my life right now and this isn't working right now. So we can either move through it and make it work or we can not and yeah. I... <laughs> so the other thing we did for this one was um uh we started having facetime calls and meetings instead of uh, mm -hmm. phone calls because um because <laughs> i always it feels like connor is yelling at me whenever we talk on the phone because he's so <laughs> loud and, and east coast this is the east coast thing so east Co mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so that's what yeah. i learned when we actually hung out in chicago last year because i always felt like he's like mad at me and he's yelling at me and when i was in a room with him and other people i realized that he's that's just how he is he's just a <laughs> loud person and it's because he's from new england yeah um but I was feeling, uh, you know, fragile after the burnout. And so we started. Um, and the other thing that we realized when we were like face to face is that we smile a lot more than we thought the other mm -hmm. person did. And so when we when we can actually see each other. It, it, yeah. When you call me ass hat yeah. and you're grinning. Yeah. And I'm different. grinning. Yeah. Yeah. It's adorable. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, so that was another thing we had like actual <laughs> scheduled. FaceTime meetings instead of Connor calling me and me freaking out that he would dare call me on the phone. And say, well, that was the other thing. Yeah. I, I sounded aggressive. And Kaylee, when she's on the phone, doesn't offer any sort of filler words or like <sighs> she'll just stop because she's writing something or she's thinking. Or I'm thinking because Well, I'm that's fine. Introvert. You go, you, then you just go, hmm. And then I know, oh, really? she's thinking. But it's just, really? it's just me talking and then Imagine that this over and over again, Kaylee. A, yeah, a marital so, type relationship. So, so oh my now, God, it's like a horrible, the worst the like it's marriage. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, he very often thinks I've been kidnapped just because I'm literally thinking of an answer. Like I want to articulate things in the best possible way. Connor's really, really good at thinking on his toes. I'm not. I would <laughs> always rather rewrite something over and over again before saying it out loud or even hitting send on a text message. Well, that's not true. I actually, I think much faster uh, with my fingers, if that makes any sense. Um, mm -hmm. So um, so I do prefer emails and, and, and texting, not that I can't banter verbally, but um, I just, I don't know. I think, I think I'm at my best when I'm typing. It's the way your mind works and there are, it Everybody works differently. Um, there are writers who do a lot of dictation because it's just easier for them to talk and talk and talk. And then there are people who feel better and more comfortable when they're typing things out. They can see the words coming across the screen and they know what it means. Um, yeah. you know, and that's, um, I think it's interesting that you're both, you're both pretty different in that. Um, and Connor, I know you said We're you- different in almost every way except for our sense of humor. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right. I can't think mm -hmm. of and, and our sensibilities when it comes to um, writing, not mm -hmm. not the process of writing, but the actual product. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think that's part of what makes you guys successful as a team, because if you have people who are at odds and battling each other all the time over something, that's not going to work. Um, but, but we it's... are at odds and battling each other all the time. And that's just part of the process. <laughs> but that's part of the process. Yeah. And it I think it like the little pieces start to fit because you each have different strengths that you come at. Um, Connor, you said you have a background where you've done theater and acting. And I think that's a, in front of the, you know, the curtain versus behind the curtain are very different mm -hmm. elements of theater. 
um, and performance. So yeah, I mean the other thing he's too. He's flexing is... whether he's in front of or behind the curtain. <laughs> Just... Doing some heavy lifting. Um, yeah. Well, I I mean we can focus a lot. Sometimes Kaylee and I have focused on. I mean it, it's crazy, honestly, how well it works. It, it sh- actually has no business. It, it shouldn't working. Work. <laughs> that she emailed me and it's like let's try this. And I it's not like I also was an author who had. 20 books and they were pretty similar so we're gonna just try it's like i i had to learn what it was to really take a book to the finish line and i'm still learning my process but i'm learning my process through kaylee's brand really because i don't have a writing brand of my own so you know what i do is tied to kaylee um so i you know and, and figuring that out and making sure that i'm supporting what she's done in the past Um, and so the part that does work really well is, you know, we look at this book and I don't, it's not like one of us looks at the book and we go, well, I didn't get anything I wanted in there, or I got half of what I wanted, but the other half I don't like, because you you got your half in there. It's not, we we're both like, we like this. This is great. This turned out the way we wanted it to. So that's why I think it does, does work, you know? Yeah, it does. And I have to say, too, that um, a lot of in the books that we've written together, a lot of the things that fans um, really, you know, pick out and come away with uh, and remember, like the Kaboober that and the strawberries, <laughs> like that's those are Connor's ideas. Um, I think he uh, he really uh, has a knack for the uh, he knows what the ladies like. I think it's just been a lifetime of figuring out how to win over girls. Yeah, and then I retired once I got married, so it's it's I'm happy yeah, to bring it out. Channeling into retirement. Into the, yeah. yeah. Um, channeling it in a different way. Mm-hmm. Um, I just I had a thought, and there it went. Um, See, it happens, Connor. Are you going to yell at her? I, no, because she told me what happened. There. It wasn't a long stretch of silence. She narrated it. I was a fan I, I have, of the narration. It was good narration. I have a tendency to do that too. <laughs> it's like I'm thinking of something. I, I think mean, that's it drives the other piece of it crazy. too. Is not just our backgrounds where we came from before romance, but in romance. Like I do all sorts of stuff. So I'll t- I'll tell Kaylee, it's like this happened in a book. She'd be like, "What? That didn't happen." I was like, "This happened in a book," yeah. you know, because Kaylee has her Kaylee rom com universe. Nice. You know, yeah. no bunt mm-hmm. stuff uh, yeah. universe. And, <laughs> I narrate books where bunt stuff Fabulous. does happen. Um, so, <laughs> and all sorts of things. Uh, so that's the other piece too, where it's just like, I, I'm like, I can talk to her and be like, well, I'm seeing this, I'm seeing this come up a lot. I'm like, people are, seem to be into this. So, mm-hmm. you know, we might want to consider that. So that's, you know. You do, and then but the, yeah. Well, the flip <laughs> side is like, Kaylee is an actual woman. So, you know, like, and I'm a dude. So it's just like, I bring certain things to the table, but I know the, the audience, like if I was doing this on my own, I would always have the issue of, you know, I, I think there's try. certain female characters I can write well, but maybe there aren't. Mm-hmm. And I would get raked over the coals for those. So to have Kaylee, you know, to be like, no, they need, it needs to work this way. It needs to work that way. So yeah, there's just lots of stuff that does, does really work that we're able to complement each other. Yeah. That's an interesting point because you are reading so many different books he through the narration. He is so much more well-versed in romance than I am, in capital R romance than I am. Like, I, I, I'm i not a good reader, and he's read hundreds of romance novels, or mm-hmm. at least half of them, at least the, the male theory part. <laughs> um, Do you, yeah, I mean, he really knows. So that's actually, okay, that's a question we've asked a couple of other narrators, is the process through your narration. Do you read the entire book, Connor, or do you just, is your process this is what I'm performing. So this is what I'm reading. Well, I don't now I don't read the female part all that closely. Um, Partially, it's just time. Um, Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll look at I'll look at it um, to make sure um, that I'm on the same page with the female narrator that we have all the characters down that I'm not, you know, that I'm not missing something. Um, But you know, there's pieces where you know, when I'm performing it, I know in essence what the character knows unless there's some secret where i'm playing another character 
where you learn something in the female part that you don't know in the male part, it just comes up so rarely mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. I would have to know that. Um, so oftentimes like, you know, I know the, I know the format, I know the genre, I know the moves I've done, I've written them. And now I've read enough of them where the guy goes, why would she act that way? I know why she's acting that way. I didn't even need to read it and really most of the time to know why she's <laughs> acting that way. Like I know why, where she is in the arc of the story. Mm -hmm. yep. um, but in some ways it's fun to be like, I don't know specifically why she's acting that way. Why would I want to know that as mm. I'm, as I'm being this guy? Cause I, mm -hmm. he doesn't know. Um, but you know, I, there, a little more authentic. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, so I try and make sure that I know the story well enough that I can be the people that I need to be. Um, but the female, the female side of the narration, you know, it's, it's, I'm not going over it and highlighting every, you know, her words and, and figuring that piece out. Um, so that I, I pay less attention, but I go through it. Did you in the beginning? Did you? Yeah, oh yeah. The entire yeah. Book in yeah. The beginning? I mean, it, it's, it's, it's like anything else where you go like, all right, I'm going to do all of it. And then I'm going to get more efficient. I'm going to, you know, where it's just like, I could spend a long time on the female parts, reading them uh, and, and really breaking them down. Or I could record my chapter again, if I don't like it. And it's like, well, which one is more conducive of, of everyone's time? You know, it's just sure. like, well, I should, I should make sure that I'm spending time on my pieces and making sure that I'm fulfilling that. Um, so, so yes, in the beginning I did all of it and I, and then as I've, gone over I've refined my process um to be like and uh, you know and that's also about communication with the female narrator um to mm -hmm. make sure that we're on the same page very cool I always like to see what the process is because everybody like I said has different processes you talk, you talk to certain people and they're like oh how this is how I do it mm -hmm. and this is how someone else does and when you're in a performance genre it, it's it's interesting to hear how other people go about things so I know that wasn't one of the questions we originally had, but like I said, the squirrel brain is always in motion thinking of the next question where I'm like, hmm, I kind of want to know that. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's more yeah. important in dual because if I have a scene, let's say it's chapter 18 and she starts and she's hot, like she comes in and she's mad. I need to know what she's mad about because mm -hmm. I'm playing her in that scene. I don't have her internal monologue and I'm not really, you know, the other thing yeah. is I, my female voice is okay. And in the beginning, I try to do a lot more variation with my female voice, but I just feel like I'm a Monty Python sketch. You know, it just doesn't, I don't, I'm just not, it's just not that. Then that's not what people pay me for. So, um, but so in dual, I need to know, make sure that I emotionally know where she's coming from. Mm -hmm. um, but in duet, it's like, I'm not any of the, the her parts. You right. know? So I, I need to play the, emotion of the scene and be present in the scene that's that's the trick in duet because when you're in a chapter and you have eight lines you have to make sure that your energy is there in mm -hmm. those eight if that makes sense we're mm -hmm. just like when you're narrating you're already there because you're describing it and you're talking the whole time and you bring it back down but then you're back in it again and you're just kind of riding this wave but in duet when you're just the wild lines and in her chapter uh, and it's like it's a big heated chapter that that's a trick to make sure that you're like you're there you're in the scene mm -hmm. um so similar to performing in the show and you know that's mm -hmm. putting yourself in that moment where you're like okay i only have this much to go on but i have to make sure that it's it's as intense as it needs to be and it follows what it needs to be and and be in the don't miss a line don't don't miss a mark don't miss it you know you have to yeah. be right on it well, so in that way it's very yeah. much more like film acting than it is theater yeah. acting because theater you're in the space with the person so yeah. you get their energy and in film sometimes you're talking to a wall sometimes right. it's a green you know it's just like it's not you know mm -hmm. um um I'm not, i haven't been able to think of any names today but there was one actor he talked about he's like you should be able to do it to a wall and it shouldn't make a difference you should have that level of craft um, mm -hmm. so so there is that piece of it i get that and I, I i think that goes back to when we're listening to audiobooks <clears throat> there's a difference there are certain narrators we come back to over and over and over again because they can truly immerse themselves in 
whatever the scene is and however they're narrating it. And it comes across as um, it's just more effective, you know, when, when we can, you can feel the energy in the lines that they're saying, even though there may not be many of them mm -hmm. um, when you're doing that in the, the duet and then in dual, when you have to pick up everything and you have to put in the emotions and everything that everybody else is feeling it, it comes across differently from certain people. Mm -hmm. um, which is, again, I think like why we narr we, we, we gravitate to certain narrators. And I, I am one of those people where I'm, I will pick up a specific audiobook because of who's narrating it, even if it's somebody I've never read before. But if there are certain narrators in it that I know I like, I'm like, oh, well, let's check that out. I wouldn't necessarily read their book otherwise, but I will because of the narrators. Mm -hmm. And then there are certain authors where I'm like, I love this author and I just, I'm going to trust that the narrators are going to do justice to their work because I love the author. And then sometimes mm -hmm. they just kind of come together where it's like, I love this author and I love these narrators and this is like the perfect book. Um, so that kind of happens a lot with you guys, just so you know. Uh, I I get to the point with certain certain books where I'm like, I don't want to read it. I just want to listen. I just want to absorb it. It's 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 what I need for that story is to have them tell me in my head versus me reading it. So, mm. okay, thinking. yeah, this, the thinking. squirrel, the We're squirrel thinking. just went again. I'm like, there was something else, but- I think um, we should talk about the book. <laughs> I, that's, I was just like, I'm like looking at my notes also. And I'm like, so we had all like these questions and then there we went off on a tangent. Um, <laughs> We're running a little to, long tonight. I, I want to make sure go, we talk about the book. That's what she said. Um, sorry. Oh God. So-, so oh, Nice. <laughs> sorry. So <laughs> Susie had a really good question from way back. We're going to, we're going to go back to talking about the book. We're supposed to be talking about Susie's <laughs> going to bring us back, back to it. Do you have a favorite scene or part um, in the billionaire's back? I do. I, I really love the first chapter. Um, it took me a long time to write it and really get into it, but I feel like, um, so the first chapter is uh, 12 years before the rest of the book and there's kind of a YA quality to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I was really proud of the fact that like you immediately get their dynamic and the setting and just the tone of the book. And it's, it's more feelsy than um, I think what I normally write, at least in the beginning mm -hmm. of a book, because um, Usually I write, uh, I think in almost all of my books, he falls first um, and she's, uh, it takes her a long time to admit that she has feelings. And this one, um, I think I decided I wanted her to really have that longing. Um, and it was actually, I loved writing it. It felt kind of painful and weird and awkward at first, but I just put that into the, into the chapter, into the way I wrote it. And I really loved it. It felt it was uh, really all the feels in that one chapter. Yeah. Um, so I love that. And then I also love there's a whole sequence, um, like right before they go to New York, uh, when it's raining, it, which is very romantic. Yeah. And there and I love it in the audiobook. I love the way Connor narrated um, that when Grady finally, you know, says how he's always felt. It's very satisfying. Um, so yeah, that's my favorite. Um, I think, I think my favorite is when he comes back, and there's all these memories in the car, and then all that leading up and seeing his family, and then seeing her again for the first time, um, and all that. I think that whole sequence from when he finds his old car in the garage mm -hmm. to uh, seeing her in her bakery, um, I think that's that's my favorite section. Yeah, that's a good example of yeah. like one of Connor's uh, really good uh, first drafts because I didn't have to do a lot to that chapter. To... Yeah, you never know. Just flow. Yeah. <laughs> when I it's think good, that's it's good. Cool. And when, yeah. it's, when it's bad, bad. Katie fixes it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's my motto. Yep. yep. That, that process works. So yeah. you go with it. So what what is the thing that you're most excited about? this book um what, what do you what do you i'm interested you a... can you hear my cat sorry um i'm interested to, to see how people respond to uh 
the tone of it because I think, it, I mean, it is, uh, there is a lot of quirkiness in there, um, but I think, like I said, there is a lot of sort of feelsiness in this one too, but also it's a slow burn and then there's just like so much sex and it's a little <laughs> bit, um, <laughs> it's a little bit, I don't know if it's spicier, maybe it's spicier. I think I think the early readers found it a bit spicier than um, the other books. Like I feel like with every book that I've written, the open door is opening a little bit wider. <laughs> um, and so I, I'll, I'm interested to see how people react to certain spicy scenes. I I I hope I hope people respond to. I th I I was really happy with how we combined billionaire with small town. Yeah. um without the billionaire perfect. owning the small town so where we got billionaire like i i was big on um i want to say this without judging because i you know i put my all but i have my own opinions about the books i read which i try very hard to keep to myself without mm -hmm. i just want to be positive because but what are the odds that i would like every book exactly the same of the oh, 275 different. that i've done mm -hmm. um but i i try to be professional and but i i'm always i'm always like be a billionaire that's so much money. It's so, it's so much money. But a lot of times people are billionaires and they do nothing, nothing with it. So I was like, they're gonna, he's gonna treat her to some mm -hmm. awesome stuff, like some awesome stuff. And so that was big on my part. But then also like to make sure we get the small town, like the cool, yeah. quirky, yes. cozy character feel to have both those things. And I was like, the way the the way we structured the story, I was like, I think I, re I really like the way this works. So well, I, I work for Avery Maxwell. So um, our our niche is small town billionaire. Right. Yeah. Yes. And, yeah. We, and we didn't knows. know that when was she, a thing. When, we, when she when, when she said, started yeah. writing it, she didn't know it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah she said that. She's like, I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't yeah. know that it could be a thing. Well, so. Um, for me, reading or listening to this, and I'm, and I'm sure that I'll I'll read it too because I I have a tendency to do both. But mm -hmm. um, that was the thing that I liked because that's the thing I like about Avery's books is that that her guys are um, all kind of princes. They they mm -hmm. treat their their ladies like they should be treated, and um, so I, I'm like, well, this will be fun because I like you know, it, it's mm -hmm. it's the niche that I know, and um, mm -hmm. you guys did it really really well. Yeah. Um, Thank you. And without being like presumptuous, I mean, I think I think that there's a there's a line in billionaire romances that that you you have to tread really carefully where um, the uses of the over over the top gifting don't become right. mm -hmm. slimy. And, yes. yeah. and you guys right. did it. You guys did it really, really well. It was classy. Was and and um, as far mm -hmm. as the spice level in it, I. I don't know whether it was uh, listening to it. <laughs> I can tell you it was very <laughs> spicy because my my family listened to it as well. <laughs> we don't have any children in our house. We're all adults, oh, okay. so um, there are no children in our house. Um, Mine didn't. But, <laughs> Good. But I think that it's that it is because it is a little bit more slow burn. Um, <laughs> It wasn't necessarily. I don't. I mean, like, I got to the end of it. and I thought, well, was that spicy or was it just compact? And yeah. I was like, well, if you took all of the spice in Kaylee's in, in, in their other books and you kind of like truncated it down into this spi space, I think you, I think the spice level is probably pretty even. Interesting. But because it, but because it's all yeah. like leading up to it, and there's so much, they just get on with it already. <laughs> Yeah. You know, but I mean, not Contacted so, spice. like, yeah, they're going to do it. We know we're going to do it. They're going to, I know they're going to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I thought, I thought that it was very well done. And, yeah. and, and, um, it, even the audio sometimes it, that's the other thing I wanted to ask. Um, and I think Julie's going to ask the question later. Um, is it when you, when you're doing the narration for, um, for those th those components of the story, um, did does co-writing help you navigate those, or is is it actually worse trying to read your own like <laughs> your own scene? Um, no, it's it's honestly much easier um, because part of the issue 
I'm, I, I've said this before on other interviews, but it's not quite acting, even when you want to act it. You still have to narrate because mm -hmm. the author isn't there and there's no director. And so this is the one performance of this story. And mm -hmm. I also don't want to get in the way um, mm -hmm. by making it out. Like if you're at, you know, the whole, I don't know how familiar you are with them. Um, you know, the whole Jack Sparrow thing about he was supposed to be just a normal swashbuckler. And, you know, Johnny Depp came in with all these choices and he, they were going to fire him and they had meetings about it. And good thing he did that. But it's just like, if I did that with a book, it's done like, and then it's there and the author's yeah. incredibly unhappy with it, maybe, you know. And, and so I, I have to pull back to a certain extent to make sure that I'm not um, going to places where... I, I think it would work. I think it would be nice, but it's not really on the page. It's not. And so with when I do my own stuff or like stuff with Kaylee, there's no question. I know exactly right. what it's supposed to be doing. Yeah, I, I noticed that in Decker. I, I mean, I, mm -hmm. I think I mean, I, I've I have listened to most of the stuff that you have done with Kaylee. And that was when I noticed there was a, a there was a difference in the way that um you owned it, mm -hmm. I think. In, in I think a, it's probably in because a... Decker is cocky as well, but, um, but yes. <laughs> I, w I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'll say yeah. it. But no, I, yeah. but I think that, that it felt like, um, I, I adore what you what you do um, narr with your narr narration, but with Decker and with this one too, I think, um, it just feels like it's so natural. Like, mm -hmm you already you already know that that's the way it's supposed to be and and you bring yeah. that um that subtle this is what the author really meant mm -hmm. with this scene mm -hmm. to it and I, mm -hmm. I i i commend you on that thank you so i was so impressed with the level of innuendo so i need to know <laughs> who who thinks of that so one the chapter titles phenomenal love the chapter titles but there was so much fun innuendo worked into everything that yeah. just came through in the narration also that I don't know if it would have come through the same way on the page reading it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know who was responsible for it. If it was a combined I effort. Said, I don't know either. It's probably both of us. I but said, I, uh, I was adamant. I was like, I want chapter titles um, because yeah. Kaylee had them in, it was bossy, right? Well, all the um, very holiday books have. Them. Right, yes. right. All the very, and I just like them. I think they set the tone. I like I it's them a lot too. of fun. Yeah. I love it. Um, and so what and we then, go on? Uh, well, there's other writers too that that do titles, and I always like them whenever I'm narrating. Um, yeah. You know, uh, honestly, when I narrate, it's it's very much not about whether I enjoy something or not because I have the job to do. But whenever mm -hmm. there's a title, I just enjoy it. So like that's just me, like a reader, just enjoying it. Mm -hmm. Um. But then, yeah, and so we came up with chapters, but it was it was pretty 50-50. I came up with yeah, about half. Yeah, it, it was. Up. Like, I always, um, I actually come up with the chapter titles uh, first before we get into the writing of um, of the manuscript. And so we had oh. a Google Doc um, with a bunch of punny potential titles, and then we would sort of pick one for whichever fit the chapter. Um, a couple of them we just came up with uh, for for the chapter while we were writing, but uh, it was um, that was a fun thing. <laughs> they're fantastic. They're really I funny. yeah, there there's a couple yeah. of things that um, you know I was I knew wouldn't necessarily translate to audio like the the need like K N E A D. Oh, I totally that heard it though. Really, I, I knew like you can see it. Well, and I think because you had already built it up where, you know, that's, I was right. just looking at it. It's like, that's chapter eight. So by chapter eight, after hearing most of them before that, you I'm know, like, okay, a there's yeah. a pun in there. And yeah. it just came across I mean, really I, well I, because you built that. I say yeah. it differently, knowing that it may or may not come across. But instead of saying a friend in need, I said a friend in need. need. And so, you know, <laughs> there's something, it, it, just, yeah. it just marks it. You either know or you don't, but you just know <laughs> that it's not the normal version of need um, yeah chapter nine was my favorite title and chapter the giant pain in the bunt was oh. just fantastic <laughs> <laughs> that whole chapter was great do either of you have a particular trope that you like to write don't like writing not that um, you're yucking anybody's yum 
just you know your preferences oh uh, well you know i think almost everything i write is opposites attract just because i like the banter and the the dynamic of that but um i love i really want to get back to writing a, a friends to lovers story and i actually have so many ideas and i just can't nail one down but you know enemies and frenemies to lovers is very fun i i'll never write a bully romance um i don't think i'll go very dark ever um so yeah i can't see you doing that either <laughs> no i mean um it's so I just, I, yeah. yeah i just i mean one day i would love to write like just a straight contemporary romance and see if i can and like not have the joke well it's it, it's i've been reading quite a bit of lucy score lately and it's so interesting to me because she's hilarious like she's like mm -hmm. a genuinely funny person and writer and she can write like it's like very widely widely appealing contemporary romance where the characters are also quippy you know yeah i would love to be able to do something like that someday cool. i'm looking forward okay. to reading that one <laughs> good Honor. I hope I write it. Um, no, I, I, I like the challenge of figuring it out. I, I need to understand it. I think the Kaylee for very Vegas, it was uh, accidental marriage. What, what, what's the official name of that? We woke up married. We woke up married. And I remember yeah. her <laughs> telling me that. I mean, like, well, how? What are you talking about? Yeah. And so. But I think part of the advantage is I, as a man, get to translate that. So it's so I get to understand the trope and then slightly nudge it a different way so that I can get, you know, like, OK, um, which is a little less. One of the things, if I can just jump in and say one of the things about working with a guy is that I always have to deal with the question, well, why aren't they fucking? Like, like, I'm like, <laughs> because of the trope. It's the trope. They can't be fucking. He's like, but. Uh, come on. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If it were yeah, up to so... Connor, they would all be like no strings. <laughs> okay. Right? That's not, that's a bit much. Um, but also true. Yeah, maybe. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I, I like the same thing with billionaire and small town is trying to understand. So what, what are the elements of these pieces that are so attractive? Uh, to so many people and then well what piece of that do I like I like the challenge of that so um you know I I don't know it's interesting I I mean I like quippy stuff and you know it's it's fun coming up with those chapter titles and the and the unfinished romance novel I have is very much if if anybody ever reads that someday it'd be like <laughs> so wait this was written before you met Kaylee um but i don't i don't know if that's what i would ultimately write uh you know but i i, I still feel like i'm in the phase of perfecting all the brush strokes and making sure that i can do you know as a painter you can do realism you can do all, all the stuff and then you can go off and do your own thing um which i may or may not ever do but you know i think part of why we changed it is we want to make this as fun as possible and i think without the outside life stuff that happened yeah. i think it it will be and would be and there's there's yeah. people we want to get back to in beacon harbor i think so mm. we'll see oh yeah no we are we're getting yeah. back to it yeah i love that you have that collaboration though where you had it beforehand so you know you know what it was where it's going um so when the hiccups happen when you're working in a, a business partnership with someone like that and then a hiccup happens if all you know is the hiccup, I think it does make it difficult to kind of get back to it. But you guys have had this relationship longer than that. So when life happens and yeah, it's like the the ultimate shit storm. You're like, okay, this is just a, this is a bump. I get it, but there's other things. And I, I do think it's, it's neat because this is kind of unique where the two of you working together, most romance author partnerships, most romance writers in general are women. So having that different perspective of someone who comes in and they're like huh maybe we need to push this along a little bit this is kind of draggy or someone's coming back and saying but this is what they want this is i'm a woman and i know this is what they want but the guys you know like but this isn't real this is the, you know i i love that kind of a push and pull because it kind of gives you both a little bit more to to move forward and to to grow to progress to sit through that process so that it gets mm -hmm. better as you go it's not 
stagnant. Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. Do you guys, um, those of you who like had read my books before um, or as well as the stuff I've written with Connor, do you notice any slight differences? Um, or major differences? Them? Or major differences. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, there's a, a tone. I think there's a tone shift a little bit yeah. between some of the chapters um, for me. <clears throat> but I like it. It's like you're sharing different minds. Connor, well, yeah, that's the thing that works for dual POV writing. Connor's, um, I have to say, Connor's author voice is actually, it's very, it's a little bit cheesier than mine. <laughs> and it's lovely. It's really, really lovely. I mean, he really is more of a capital R romantic than I am. And he'll, in his, um, <laughs> in his uh, outlines, it'll very often say, they make love. And I'm like, seriously, dude? Is that what they do? <laughs> Some people, Some. when they find the right person. <laughs> I have no problem with the making love, but I'm like, okay, but how are they going to make love? Like, That's a problem for another for? day. It's an outline. <laughs> it's an outline, I, right. <laughs> I, I've, re- I've read your older, the, the, your solo stuff, and I, I think that there's, um, well, I love your solo stuff let's put that out there I, I love it and I think that you that you write male characters really well and very believably um and I think that there's an authenticity that comes from having a guy chime in um in in not so much that that the scene is completely different but that that the cadence and the in the languaging seems more authentic um I live with a punster so I I as I was listening to it, I'm like, oh yeah, I can tell that this is, this is the way a guy says it. And I, and this is the intonation (laughs) that a guy uses Mm -hmm. that um, it's really subtle. And it's not, I mean, not that that your work was, was lacking in any way, but it does add a depth that I appreciate. Cool. Well, you know, um, when I narrow, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Well, I I thought a lot about this when I partnered up with Kaylee and uh, you know, uh, when we were planning out the year, like I, you know, I have my own schedule and Kaylee has her schedule and what, what is she releasing next year? And what are we working on together? And like, am I ever going to do my own stuff? And as I narrate, you know, hundreds and hundreds of authors works, it's like, I know when guys sound like guys and I know when they don't. And I'm like, I'm the only one and it doesn't matter because the whole audience, they, they have no idea. Whereas the reverse of that, if I'm writing a female chapter, they'll know immediately. They'll know immediately, and it'll be a major, major problem. So, you know, whether I, I've read, I've read authors where the guy, I'm like, oh, these are dudes. Yeah, well done, nice. And then I've read ones where I'm like, okay, you know, it, these are these are fully fleshed out characters. They're not like my friends. They're not, you know, right. that kind yeah. of deal. But it's also like it doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter, given the audience. The audience is not going to be like, wait a minute. You know, it's not like it's 50% dudes out there being like, whoa, right. whoa, whoa, whoa. I right. came here for small town, but I'm just not vibing with. Not vibing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm laughing because every now and then my husband will read something over my shoulder and he's like, um, and I'm like, Shh, go away, not for you. But. <laughs> <laughs> he's also like the king of dad jokes and puns so when those come up it's like mm-hmm. yeah i'm definitely hearing that in a guy's voice well right. done well right. played um yeah there's definitely a difference julie you were you were saying something julie, i feel like um this book there was an intimacy that was there yes it was spicy for sure but there seemed to be an intimacy and it's probably just their um their knowledge of each other and just I don't know it I felt so much in this book I loved it I loved the fact that um you know he's this billionaire dude and then he gets in the car and he's you know it's almost like he's going back um back in time the Mm -hmm. cd player I loved the fact that that was in there it was just I don't know quirky for me but um and then when he got 
to Beacon Harbor, it was like, hey, you know, and he was just back to his normal self. So I felt like you did a great job. Mm. Yeah. And that, that, uh, that intimacy that they had, that was one of the reasons I wanted it to be a brother's best friend, because I felt like that was the thing that would tie the small town and the billionaire together. The fact that they already knew each other, because um, mm -hmm. it's it, brother's best friend and friends to lovers is kind of similar in that way. And the, the quality of, um, of how that relationship changes um, when they become lovers. And I, I loved that. I mean, like I said, it was kind of it was weird for me to have that um, that feeling of longing and, and rejection at, uh, for the heroine at the beginning of the book. I don't usually write that, but I ended up really and truly loving it. And it was, a, it was so satisfying when he, when she finally hears from him, um, you know, why he felt that he couldn't be with her. It was, mm -hmm. it was really nice. Yeah. We, I mean, we talk about that a lot during the process where it's like, where I try and figure out, I was like, so what, what do you like, Kaylee? What, what are you most interested in here? And you talked a lot right. about that, about, you know, that, that idea of this unrequited thing, you know, hanging for, you know, I mean, that there's, when we, when we wrote the kiss, that was, uh, that was one of my favorite parts of like, mm -hmm. the idea mm -hmm. that they've been holding this last inch for 12 years, the last inch between where their lips are going to meet. Like that was, that, you know, he had to travel hundreds of miles in like 12 years and then there's one inch left and they got to figure that out. Yeah. Um, See, that is what I think is amazing about the story. Just that one inch. It seemed like there was that one inch everywhere, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. weaved throughout. And it just, mm -hmm. I don't know, there was just an emotion to it. And I just you did a great job. Sorry. Good. I'm glad I'm getting, no. I'm getting all... <laughs> Um, yeah I, and i think i think that was the goal where it's just like we i i wanted all the colors we wanted all the colors of like you know it being funny and you know and actually uh, you know at first we weren't sure how we funny weren't sure but we were like yeah. we we were under the auspices of maybe a light contemporary because yeah. we didn't know how funny it would be um and, and then, then like you know lobsters yeah lobsters <laughs> and, lobsters and, and, and uh, that was so funny and Kaylee made Krabby Crawford because I was annoying her one day. So she made another season. One scene. day? Yeah. Well, that particular day. I annoyed yeah. you so much you created a Krabby man. Yeah, who was a CC. He just yeah, happened to be Yeah, who was also a CC. And I was like, okay. Yeah. So. He's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was sad. Connor was sad that a lot of the Krabby Crawford scenes ended up being Samantha's chapters yeah um, i think samantha gonna... was also sad about that <laughs> <She's> <laughs> not thrilled. Yeah, she was she's still really mad at me it, though. Can, can we just shout out to her because yeah. oh man, she did an amazing job yeah, yes, yes. Amazing. let's talk about her so i i hadn't listened to her and i hadn't heard her until i i streamed um my friend aaron mallon did that thing in vegas uh the if these these walls can talk um where they did it live in vegas and samantha um subbed in for emma wilder and i immediately saw in her performance at a table read i was like she can you know fly with the kaylee loring mm -hmm. lady parts like i could just tell that she had the sense of humor and the energy for my stuff and um, and I brought her up to Connor. I was like, well, what do you think about Samantha Brentmore? Brentmore? And he was like, yeah, like, cause he had, had yeah. he was just starting to work with her a lot at that point. <laughs> Not as much as I have been lately. Yeah, yeah. And was Grace Moore. Grace yeah. Moore. Yes. Um, <laughs> I sent her an email for a project. I assumed she was the other narrator. She was just the producer, but I was just oh. like, here's your stuff. And she's like, well, actually, uh, oh, like, oh okay. sorry yep yeah, sorry um but anyways so i and you know and i it like i said it felt like i worked really hard on this and um <clears throat> it was such a slow burn and when we we finally got to the chapter where they did it um i spent like at least a week writing that mm -hmm. chapter because i wanted it, it had to be a huge payoff and also mm -hmm. She had been resisting him for so long, and I knew that this was where, like, you know, the dam is going to burst. And so I wrote it in a very, very specific way. 
and Sam completely nailed it. Like yeah. she just totally. got every line yep. perfectly. Like just the oh my god, it's finally happening kind of. Yes. Thing. It was just, it's it was so great to listen to. So yeah. Yeah. She's she's she fantastic. Is fantastic. She is one of those when I get the audio files to proof and I see her name and I'm like, oh, yay. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta get excited <laughs> about that. Because she does bring a lot of emotion to it. And she's got just this variety of of ways that she, her cadence, her tone, her inflection, everything is just really, really solid. Well, I, I listened to every piece of it because I produced this one. So I did all the proofing, yeah. which oh, I cool. So it was nice to to piece it all together. Mm -hmm. um, to hear it all. Yeah. In one. And that chapter, that chapter is one where I didn't do very much on because that was one we were leading up and Kaylee was like, no, I, I, I know you know, it was almost the reason for the book was that chapter, you know, like that coming, you know, coming together. Mm -hmm. um, so Kaylee knew what she wanted to do with it. So I was just like, great. And then she wrote it. Run with it. And yeah. I okay. love it. And it was the bunt cake scene that the bunt, so oh. the one we were trying to figure out who wrote it, who was responsible for the. That, that. No, I will tell you this. Um, <laughs> behind the scenes um when connor wrote his first rough draft it, there was a back door joke it, it ended as a button it was like uh i need to i i need to go through your back door and i then turned it into a bundt cake joke i was like well they're in a bakery so we need to make it a bundt cake joke and not we a need to you joke. hear that we need to <laughs> it worked yeah we must it worked that was the it scene worked. i had the elder spawn listened to i was like this is freaking hilarious so and but it that's was. what the quote that i had written and i'm in the car i drive regularly so i know i i know i was cracking up um <laughs> but hot weenie baby batter <laughs> i just it, it made me crack up Oh my God. I mean, I obviously wrote it. I don't remember where I wrote that, but oh my God, did I really yeah, write that, that? That has you written all over it. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, it's hilarious. Well, it's context. Yeah. Our, <laughs> stalker Sisters, I'm not sure how you, whether you guys know what our background is, but our, our, our the Stalker Sisters started as a chat. <laughs> it, that is um, uh, nearly a 24 7 fixture on facebook now i love um, knowing it, that it, i mean I, I sort of it we scares get, me but i love knowing that about this community that there are women who are just constantly like nobody is reading alone anymore no, the, right? the four of us are are so plugged into each other i mean into our lives and and to all of the things that we do that stalker sisters has just kind of evolved from that um but our chat chats for this <laughs> particular listen <laughs> we're, we're hilarious because we knew that we weren't supposed to spoil anything so like the chats are all one or two words <laughs> pink, yes pink just frosting a little a little, yes carrot cake pink frosting. that was yes it just little little tiny thing <laughs> nice. and like this is marketing gold we should we should send this to them i would actually well i, I would use that this book is for me, it's really hard to market because, you know, like I said, we were trying to combine all these different things and I'm like, well, how do you like market that to like the whole audience or do you like divide it up and like, okay, we'll market to the romantic comedy audience and then there's a small town audience and then there's a billionaire audience or is it just like the whole general, I don't know. Yeah, I think, th I think that it works as, as a total works. package <laughs> and, so, and, it, it, and it's, it's, um, it's brilliant and and we i totally enjoyed not only not only experiencing it but sharing it with my sisters here so oh, thank you so God. much for allowing us to to have that experience you're welcome yes. i wish we should have thought to give you guys the um the arcs as well <laughs> but oh well well i got one i i i kind of wormed my way into your arc team a while ago i think i begged um because i i have yeah I have, I have a horrible time waiting for things. <laughs> At the beginning of the podcast, um, Connor said something about, you know, the ingredients of the book. And that is like perfect marketing for the book. So mm -hmm. that has to be, you know, instead of tropes, the ingredients of the book. That's that so funny. You hear that, that Kaylee? It was perfect. What I it said. Was perfect. 
was hey man, <laughs> I'm the one who said that very often the stuff that you write is what the women pick up on. I I said that. <laughs> you did but say I that. will also say what you that said I about me I was perfect. That was perfect <laughs> what you just said. When you hey, said I was perfect, that was perfect. Um <laughs> No, but I will say that I actually I've been making notes. I'm like I've been putting off doing reels for this, but I did the first idea I had was, you know, me. You like, made a great reel. The that uh the the Canva one you just sent me. That was for an ad. Like I'm I still have to do reels that like I'm actually physically in, like for my IG profile. Right. But I'm gonna do something where like I'm typing in the ingredients. That's so that was an idea that I had. So I'm glad to know that it was a perfect idea that now it will it will sound like I stole it from Connor and the Soccer <laughs> Sisters. But that's the advantage I, of wait. being partners. I think it needs to be a recipe feeling. card instead of a trope graphic, instead of a trope square. It uh, a recipe yeah. card. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And one part I think you should. Yeah. But yes. Yes. <laughs> like on the Instagram reel or one of them. And mm -hmm. or tiktok you know be mixing mm -hmm. a cake you know and talking about the book or talking about the scene or whatever like I pink, think. pink frosting off a of pink, pink frosting. <laughs> yes yeah absolutely okay pink the, frosting the, is the, the strawberries of this book right mm. <laughs> so a friend my my best friend's daughter so my supplemental spawn just turned 20 and my friend sends me a picture of this heart-shaped cake with pink confectioner's sugar as the uh -huh. frosting on it and i just we have it? <laughs> started laughing and i sent her back and i was she reads romance also and i'm like oh oh honey just wait just wait <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna send her the book when it comes out because now she's like no i don't want to wait what's wrong with you <laughs> I will say that for that scene, Connor had like butter and sugar, and I was like, it has to be pink. <laughs> That's pink. Oh my God. That's okay. So that is that is yep. a spoiler there, but you know what? It People is have to go and look for it though. I said what I said. Now you gotta <laughs> find time. it. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Exactly. Oh gosh, we are like, okay, we're, we're taking up like over. entirely way too much over. of your time and we appreciate it so much. So okay, we had other questions, but you know what? Executive decision here. Let's I'm gonna do a real quick what's next what's coming up for you guys next um well we've already worked on the outline for your um damien and vera's book so it's oh yes be, it's gonna be another beacon harbor uh rock star mm. that makes me yeah. very happy <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah so we'll get into i mean people who haven't read it yet won't know what this means but we'll get into like you know why vera is the way that she is and why they have the dynamic that they have and yeah, there's it's a really, really cool fun. Reason. It's really yeah. fun. And there and it uh yes. it will be <laughs> it will be hopefully the opposite of what this was in that the, the, this book was the longest book either of us has ever written at like a hundred and over 117,000 words and every chapter was so fucking long. Um but this one is going to be much more like it's just going to go like this. It's going to be 70,000 words. You say words that every less. time, Kaylee. I know I do, but this really feels like it's going to be like that because it's kind of that frenemies to lovers mm. vibe. And uh, it's a really, it's a really fun story. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I'm excited for that. <laughs> here for it. She, Definitely. You're selling for it. shorter books to girls who like girthy books. So it's all good. I we, we like big books and we cannot we lie. Cannot uh, lie. Nope. So many jokes. Nope. Stop it. Okay. Um, <laughs> just keep going on it. God forbid you should say funny things around us. My God. How I, dare you? Is that an innuendo? Especially wordplay. What? Disgusting. Right. I, they'll tell you I have a tendency like off the rails. There, I have no filter. Um, I hit 50 and filter failure became a big time thing. Oh, um, all the, the fucks just went right out the window. So uh, I have none left to give. Uh, my field of fucks is barren. And um, so. <laughs> and, and, I've, and I've got time on you and I'm pushing 60 and I, I have even fewer. <laughs> what? Oh. See, then you're getting into wordplay on my last name, and I can just go off on that for hours. Yeah. I'm not even going to go there. Um, yeah. More, fewer. Uh, yes. Not as many as less than. 
Um, <laughs> 10 items or fewer. Here we go. Okay. We're moving on to the <laughs> speed round because we're going to let you guys go because y'all have lives and um, we appreciate you spending this part of your lives with us. But we always do this little speed round. It's not anything um, you know, super exciting or fancy, but it's fun. So we're it's it's a this or that. So we've got some this or that questions that we'll ask you guys, and it's just whatever pops into your head mm -hmm. first. And Julie, you're first. Coffee or tea? Coffee. <laughs> <laughs> beard or no beard? That uh, might be odd for you to answer. I will Connor. be. I will be someone's beard. I will be the right person's beard. <laughs> And I have a beard, so <laughs> double beard. Hard rock or country? Hard rock. Hard rock. Beach or mountain Beach. vacation? Beach. Plan ahead or live in the moment? I plan ahead. Plan, 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 plan. Read the book or audio book? Well, <laughs> honestly, it depends, but audio. Um, I have to read all of them. I don't get to listen, so I guess uh, read. He has to read the audio, yeah. <laughs> Cookies or cake? Uh, cookies. cookies. Wow, we have so much more in common, Kaylee. I know. <laughs> Vanilla or chocolate? Vanilla. <sighs> it depends on the product. Good answer. <laughs> no, it's Drag not. Cake. It's this or that. <laughs> the answer is carrot it cake. It depends. But I love twist ice cream, cream, so you get both. Pink <laughs> yeah. frosting. Pink frosting. Pink <laughs> frosting. Draft or edit? Uh, I don't draft. I guess. What is? What does that mean? Do you prefer <laughs> to draft, or do you prefer to go back and fine tune? Your draft, Kaylee. I'm draft, yeah. You're definitely okay. draft. Okay. I'm uh, edit. Interesting. Kindle or paperback? <sighs> I mean, I read more on Kindle. Yeah. But Me I like too. Paperbacks. Yeah. Very cool. See, that was easy, right? And fun. Yeah, so... I wasted so much diarrhea. All day. <laughs> right? See? I lost so much water with you guys. That's the thing. Like. <clears throat> Connor hates hearing about it, but I, I, he's like, I did I not do. enjoy I really this do. information at all. But I'm like, but I lost so much water weight. It's amazing. It's now you have thing. to hydrate, hydrate, I'm hydrate, hydrate. Five. No, I always hydrate. Very yeah, fluid. I'm pro hydration. Yeah, big time. Yes. Thank you so much for doing this with us. Could be vodka. Mm. This is fun. It's, it could be vodka. I don't know. Okay. Who knows? But. So thank you guys so much for, for joining us, for chatting with us, for um, spending the time with us and, and um, spending the time with our listeners and, and viewers. It's been a lot of fun and we really, really, really appreciate your time. Yeah. So, Thanks for having pleasure. us. Thank you. Uh, thank you. You're such good company.